Hello everyone. Today we're continuing our series on attacks by talking about computer worms. A computer worm, uh, contrary to a computer virus, does not need a host program, but it is also able to reproduce. That means that, uh, contrary to a virus, a worm is a, an independent computer program. It does not need a host program to be executed and another main difference is the way it reproduces. Worms reproduce via networks. So if you uh, operate on a computer on an air kept system for example which is not connected to the internet you basically don't need to worry about worms because worms usually propagate through networks. Now you could also of course propagate viruses or worms through for example USB sticks but this is not usually what we call a computer worm. A computer worm is usually uh, reproducing through a network and infecting all the hosts in a network one after the other. Worms um, can infect a computer or can attack a victim's computer by abusing software vulnerabilities such as buffer overflows in system processes. And um, we can look at it, one example, one historical example here, the Lovesan or Blaster worm from well, the early 2000s, and what it did is it targeted the Windows Update server. It was a distributed denial of service attack, or a planned distributed uh, denial of service attack on the Windows Update server, meaning that no Windows machines were able to access this server anymore to get their uh, software updates or their operating system updates. This attack was planned as a, as a DDoS attack, uh, as I've said, on August 16th, 2003, meaning all the infected computers were um, infected in such a way that on August 16th um, they would actually try to crash windowsupdate.com. And I'll show you quickly how they did this. So the worm, uh, the love son of Blaster worm, used a buffer overflow vulnerability in the DCOM RPC service. And this service, RPC, Remote Procedure Call, they listened on port 135. So an attacker would scan a network and look for open ports and if they would find this open port uh, 135 they would send a pre-designed packet, a payload, um, to this port. Now the problem with this DCOM RPC service is that packages arriving on this port were automatically rerouted to the service without inspecting it without any kind of check and thereby uh, they could abuse this uh, buffer overflow vulnerability in the service and thereby infecting the, the host with this blaster worm. What this worm allowed now was the, so that the attacker could spawn a reverse shell. That's a shell that's um, spawned basically on the attacker's computer and is um, usually through some, some, some specified port by the attacker connected to the victim's computer. Through this reverse shell, the attackers installed msblast.exe and they also fabricated a registry entry similar to what we've seen in the virus video um, where they basically said, okay, well, they, they put this in there that this msblast program was run and this is also where the name of the, of the, of the attack comes from that I just want to say, love you son, Bill, so love son is the... the one of the official names of this uh, attack, the other one is Blaster Worm because the attack or the, the malware was called msblast.exe. Now on August 16th, 2003, all the infected PCs or hosts um, were sending simultaneous uh, SYN packages to the Windows Update server, thereby crashing it. This is one example of a worm and uh, which propagated, um, as I've said, through network and one way to mitigate against this is to update your servers for example or your services. Um, this vulnerability, this DCOM RPC vulnerability was a known vulnerability, it was not a zero day exploit um, so people were not just not patching their software. A huge problem. Also um, some hosts had this port 143 open even though they didn't need it so closing, closing all unnecessary or unneeded ports is usually the first step in any cybersecurity strategy. So if you are responsible for a network, for example, scanning for open ports and closing 
those which are not needed is very very important um, thank you so much for watching this video um, this uh, series on the text will continue uh, in a couple of days probably with a video on trojan horses and i'll see you then